I welcome you all to the session of thermal engineering and the topic of our today's discussion is the regenerative principle of steam power cycles. So, today we shall briefly discuss about the regenerative principle, but before going to this it would be important if we discuss why this regeneration is important in the context of the steam power cycle. So, if we try to recall the schematic depiction of a steam power plant, we have seen that there are four major components. And we have seen that all the processes can be represented or can be analyzed using the simple Rankine cycle. If we try to draw the TS diagram, so I am trying to draw the TS diagram, this is for So, this is the T s diagram of the simple Rankine cycle. And what we can see that uh, even if we go for the modification or for a modification of the simple Rankine cycle by superheating the steam beyond point 3 and if we try to draw the T s diagram over here. So, you know that uh, this is so this is modified ranking cycle. What we can see from these two diagrams that whether the plant is operated following the simple Rankine cycle or the modified Rankine cycle, the important issue is the segment at which heat is added at a lower temperature. So, if we give the name, so this is 2 prime this point and this is also 2 prime. So, you know that the component or sensible heating that is 2 to 2 prime 
this sensible heating lowers the temperature at which heat is added to the cycle and it is because of this factor thermal efficiency of the Rankine cycle or modified Rankine cycle becomes lesser than that of the Carnot cycle. Okay. So, idea is if we somehow can increase the temperature at which I mean or if we eliminate this particular component or if we increase the temperature at which heat is added you know. So, in the boiler there are two components that is sensible heat transfer that is 2 to 2 prime and remaining either 2 prime to 3 or 2 prime to 3 prime depending on whether it is simple Rankine cycle or modified Rankine cycle you know if we can improve the heat addition at 2 to 2 prime or if we can eliminate this part at all I mean if we can eliminate if we can eliminate this low temperature heat addition inside the boiler then efficiency of the plant can be increased. The way by which we can increase the heat addition at a higher temperature into the cycle for which efficiency of the cycle would be higher it is very unlikely that the efficiency would be equal to the Carnot efficiency but attempt can be taken to increase the efficiency of the simple Rankine cycle or modified Rankine cycle that of the Carnot cycle efficiency. So, this could be made possible by making use of the regenerative principle. So, let me repeat it idea was that we have understood from previous classes what we can see even from today's discussion is that efficiency of the cycle which is used to describe the processes in a thermal power plant is less than that of the Carnot cycle efficiency. Attributable factor for such a decrease in efficiency is the sensible heating component that is 2 to prime. So, this sec segment which is nothing but the heat addition at a low temperature eventually lowers the average temperature at which heat is added to the cycle and which in turn results in a reduction in the thermal efficiency. So, we need to find out rather we can understand that if we can eliminate this segment or if we can reduce the low temperature heat addition then efficiency can be increased though it cannot be you know made equal to that of the Carnot efficiency, but at least efficiency can be increased and this could be made possible by making use of the regenerative principle. So, let me write here regenerative principle. So, this is nothing but raising of the temperature of the feed water. This is nothing but the raising of temperature of the feed water. leaving the pump. So, this is nothing but the raising of the temperature of the raising of the temperature of feed water leaving the pump and before entering into the boiler. So, this is 
nothing but the regenerative principle. You know what we can do? Uh, so, try to understand you know so inside this 2 to 3 that we have seen from this schematic depiction, but you know from 2 to 3 or 2 to 3 prime whether it is superheated even beyond point 3, one point is there inside the boiler that is 2 prime. So, the state point 2 which is at the exit of the pump or inlet to the boiler, but state point 2 prime that is inside the boiler wherein the heating is due to sensible heat transfer. And if we can as I have discussed if we can eliminate this portion or reduce this portion we can increase the efficiency. How can we make it? We can increase the temperature of feed water which is leaving the pump, but before enters into the boiler. If we can make such an arrangement, so that temperature of feed water before entering into the boiler can be increased perhaps heat required for such a you know such an increment or such an increase of the temperature of the water inside the boiler which will essentially come from the fuel combustion can be eliminated. So, try to understand if we can make an arrangement so that the feed water leaving the pump and before entering to the boiler can be increased up to 2 prime, but it to increase the temperature required heat should not come from the combustion of fuel instead that heating can be you know completed through that special arrangement. One such arrangement could be if we can allow feed water to go through the turbine following a counter flow heat exchanger arrangement as if uh, water is allowed to pass through the turbine and direction of water flow should be the opposite to the steam flow direction and that water should be taken into the boiler for further heating. If we can do so, we can increase the temperature of feed water before it entering into the boiler. So, let us quickly see it the regeneration method. Ideal regeneration. So, I mean we have boiler what we can do you know So, this is 1, 2, 2 prime, 3, 4. So, this is an arrangement that we can see. Okay. So, you know this is the water flow direction, this is the steam flow direction. So, this is steam flow and this is water feed water to be precise. Okay. So, this is the schematic what we can see that feed water which is pumped that feed water instead of taking directly into the boiler it is now circulated through the special arrangement and this arrangement is placed inside the turbine and water is allowed to flow in the direction which is 
opposite to the direction of the stream flow and while water is flowing through this coil, it will take certain amount of heat from the flowing stream and that you know heated water will be now taken into the boiler for further heating. So, this is an arrangement you know that here also you need to supply heat Q in, but the required heat which will essentially come from the combustion of fuel will be less than that what is needed for this particular case. So, if we consider the size of the plant is same, mass flow rate of you know steam per cycle is also same. So, to get equal power output what we can see if we compare this arrangement vis a vis this one we can understand that heat which is needed to be supplied to the boiler for this particular case would be less and we can increase the efficiency of the plant because thermal efficiency is essentially the function of q out and q in that you have seen. So, this is the ideal regenerative cycle, but while I am discussing about the you know favorable aspect of this particular cycle, I also should discuss about the you know uh, uh, I can say demerits. You know that uh, this is you can understand you have studied in heat transfer course that this is counter flow heat exchanger type. So, you know one stream is flowing that is steam is flowing in the uh, left to right direction while pertaining to this particular arrangement while water is flowing in the reverse direction and while these two streams are allowed to flow in this uh, device because steam is having high enthalpy. So, they will exchange heat and as a result of which water which will come out from this coil will be having high temperature. Now, issue is so, if we make such an arrangement essentially to increase the efficiency of the cycle, you can understand that again we are going to invite meant you know additional cost involved which is rather which should be involved with the maintenance of this coil because it is very complex geometry. So, maintenance of such an arrangement would be again difficult. So, though idea is very good that we can take certain amount of heat from one part of the cycle and we can use that heat to heat up the working substance in another part of the cycle that is nothing but regeneration. So, as if we are regenerating the heat to increase the efficiency of the cycle. Let me tell you once again idea is we can reduce the Q in which will be supplied by burning fuel. So, and to do that this is the simple arrangement and that is also known as ideal regenerative regeneration method, but though efficiency can be increased, but at the cost of the increment of efficiency we are going to have special arrangement maintenance regular maintenance as well as initial cost of such complex arrangement uh, should be justified you know with the increase in efficiency before this particular arrangement is uh, I mean should I mean is uh, considered in practical scenario. Okay. So, what is what we understand from this uh, you know uh, process is that idea is to take heat from. So, basically what is the working substance water and steam. So, idea is to take heat from one part of the cycle from the working substance and that heat is used to supply or is used to heat up the working substance in another part of the cycle. In that way we can reduce the quantity of heat that should be supplied from the external source by by burning the fuel. So, this is the concept though this this is not really feasible in practical scenario accounting for the complex geometry of the system we can find out several other avenues by which 
efficiency of the cycle can be increased. What are those? So, let us briefly discuss about uh, the T S diagram and we can see why such an arrangement, such a process will increase the efficiency of the cycle. Okay. So, if we try to draw the T S diagram. right if we draw the right so we consider the simple rank and simple rank in cycle Then so this is one, this is two, this is two prime, say this is three and this is four, right. right? So, this is basically the T S diagram of the simple Rankine cycle. Now, we are trying to discuss about the this regener you know ideal regeneration uh, method by super superimposing you know the different state points which are needed to properly describe the processes which are there in this circuit. So, you know this 2 to 2 prime this 2 prime is the heating instead of that heating which is I mean if we go back to the previous slide this 2 to 2 prime that heating should be done inside the boiler. Now, pertaining to this particular configuration we can see this heating instead of you know making to occur inside the boiler this heating is done here through this arrangement that is inside the turbine. Now, you try to understand when water temperature, so you can understand T 2 prime will be greater than T 2 at the cost of getting the temperature of feed water should be higher before it enters into the boiler, you know we need to compromise the steam temperature or steam quality as well. So, this amount of heat that is T 2 prime minus T 2. So, T 2 prime minus T 2 this amount of heat will definitely come from the expansion of steam rather enthalpy of the steam. So, while steam is expanding steam temperature should drop up to this point inside the turbine itself. So, we really do not know maybe this is 4 I am telling this is the 3 prime. So, the 3 prime state point should be inside the turbine wherein temperature would be less than T 3, but this 3 prime temperature should be even greater than T 4, because uh, depending on the uh, location of this you know uh, coil. So, what we, what we can see that this amount of heat that is delta T, if we would like to increase temp, if we would like to, if we would like to increase the temperature of water by this delta T this delta T will come from the flowing stream. right? So, what you can assume? We can assume the process is reversible. If the process is reversible you know what will happen? If we take say this is the cross section if we take any particular section then. So, you know that if we consider so this is the flowing stream and this is the flowing water. So, this is water this is stream. So, if we take any cross section at any cross section temperature of water and temperature of steam will be equal right if the process is reversible. Now, if we assume that this heat addition process rather heating of process of the feed water is reversible and then at any cross section while you know water is flowing in the opposite direction to the steam flow 
temperature of steam and temperature of water will be equal. If that is the case, cannot we write that T2 will be equal to T3 prime and T3 prime will be equal to T2. Sorry. T2 prime will be equal to T3, right. So, uh, if we assume that the process is reversible, that at any section temperature of water and temper temperatures of water and stream are equal, that is T2 equal to T3 prime and T2 prime equal to T3. As if you can understand, so this is 0.3 this is temp 0.3 prime, this is 2 and this is 2 prime. I am making this you know uh, I have drawn it only to make you understand that you know at any section even at the inlet. So, inlet and outlet is also two different sections. So, if the process is reversible at any sections at any section temperature of water and te temperature of steam this two temperatures will be equal and that is what we can see. If that is the case, now in this T s plane we could not show the process 3 to 3 prime, right. So, 3 to 3 prime will be a process which we could not show in the T s plus until now. So, basically 3 to 4 that process we have shown over here that is isentropic expansion, but 3 to 3 prime again that process will be there. You, you can understand that process we could not uh, you know so here. So, you know 2 to 2 prime that is the process which is shown over here. Since these two temperatures are equal, the path followed by water for this increase in temperature should be equal to the path. So, the path which would be followed by steam for this drop in temperature will be identical to the path which is followed by this uh, you know water when passing through this coil. So, the path of heating and so basically you know the path followed by water for this rise in temperature is identical to the path uh, followed by steam while you know uh, leaving temperature. So, this is the so this is 3 prime and remaining so this is 3 prime and remaining 3 prime to 4. So, remaining 3 prime to 4 prime. So, let us say it is 4 prime you will be again isentropic. Okay. So, you understand that you know if we try to make like this. So, what is regeneration? If we give say this is. So, if we give this is 1 prime I am giving name. So, this is A, this is A prime, this is B, this is B prime. So, if we try to look at though I could not draw at per scale, but the area of these two segments. So, this is right. So, if we try to draw in the next slide. So, this is T s plane. So, this is 1, 2, 2 prime, 3. So, this is so this point is 1. this point is 1, this point is 2, this point is 2 prime, this is 3 and uh, this 3 prime will be here here. So, this is so this is 1 prime, this is A A prime and as I told you, so this is 4, this is 4 prime 
and this is b this is b prime. So, you know that uh, so this is 3 prime if I hatch this portion. So, this is the regeneration right what I have mentioned that you know so this is 2 to 2 prime and 3 to 3 prime. So, process 2 to 2 prime and 3 to 3 prime rather processes are identical. If the process of heating is reversible for reversible process of heating of feed water, right? These two processes are identical. So, basically, you can see what we can write what we have written the temperature at any cross section of steam and water. So, these two temperatures are equal then what we can write entropy of water is equal to. So, basically what you can see that increase of entropy of water would be equal to the decrease in entropy of the steam. So, increase of entropy of water is equal to the decrease in entropy of steam. So, I should tell increase in entropy of water is equal to decrease in entropy of steam. That means, what we can tell that increase in entropy of water that is d s water that is nothing but what s 2 prime minus s 2. So, s 2 prime minus s 2 that is d s water like so basically is should be equal to minus d s steam equal to s 3 minus s 3 prime. So, you can understand entropy of water will increase by this amount and decrease of steam will decrease by this amount. This two entro, you know this decrease in entropy is equal to uh, decrease uh, increase in entropy of water is equal to decrease in entropy of steam. So, what I can say you know regeneration regenerative heat. So, what is regeneration? Because of the regeneration regenerative heat equal to Q region is nothing but the area of what a uh, area of 1 2 2 prime 1 prime a prime a. So, this is basically you know uh, this is the 2 2 prime 1. So, this is the regenerative heat right. So, this area is equal to the area 3 4 b prime b 4 prime 3 prime. So, these two areas are equal that we can see from the schematic because the process 2 to prime and process 3 to prime are same 
and also you could show that the entropy increase in entropy of water is equal to decrease in entropy of steam. So, that this these two are same. So, what we can write? So, this is the it is because of this reduction in temperature or heat we can regenerate that heat. So, this is the regenerative heat. Now, what we have written that S 2 prime minus S 2 equal to S 3 minus S 3 prime that is what we have written from this. What is S 1 prime? So, S 2 prime is equal to S 1 prime. So, we can write S 1 prime minus S 1. So, S 2 equal to S 1 from the T s diagram we can see. Similarly, S 3 equal to S 4 and S 3 prime equal to S 4 prime. right? So, S 4 minus S 4 prime. So, can we cannot we write that S 4 prime minus S 1 equal to S 4 minus S 1 prime. right? So, you know that S 4 prime what you have written S 4 prime minus S 1. So, S 4 prime minus S 1 equal to S 4 minus S 1 prime. So, basically you know if we try to see that that is delta S. So, that is delta S right. So, if we look at that uh, from this T S plane. So, basically you know that this is delta S and also this is delta S. That means, if we look at this stage diagram, cannot we say if we use different color that 1 prime, 2 prime, 3 prime and 4 prime. So, this is right. Try to understand because the ideal regenerative. So, basically ideal regenerative cycle we can write here that ideal regenerative cycle which is that if we go back to the previous slide. So, that is you know 1, 2, 2 prime, 3, 3 prime, 4 prime. So, 1, 2, 2 prime, 3, 3 prime, 4 prime. So, this is the ideal regenerative cycle right 1, 2 prime, 1, 2, 2 prime, 3, 3 prime, 4 prime. So, this is equivalent to the Carnot cycle is equivalent to the Carnot cycle which is that 1 prime, 2 prime, 3 prime and 4, 1 prime, 2 prime, 3 prime and 4. So, this is 1 prime, 2 prime, 3 prime and 4. Right? So, basically why? Because you know this is delta S, S 4 prime minus S 1 equal to S 4 minus S, S 1 prime. So, you know, so this particular segment this is equal to this. So, I mean try to understand. So, this is also del S, this is also del S. So, basically you can understand 1, 2, 2 prime, 3, 3 prime, 4 prime that is since let me tell you if I use another color since these two areas are equal. Since these two areas are equal that is basically regenerative heating I mean if I re, because if we reduce this one. So, if we subtract this area from this ideal regenerative cycle and if we add this area then you can understand 1 prime 2 prime 3 and 4 you will be getting. So, by subtracting if we subtract, subtract this area from this ideal regenerative cycle and if we add here since these two are equal we are getting new cycle and that is the Carnot cycle. So, 1 prime, 2 prime, 3 prime and 4 that you can see 
1 prime, 2 prime, 3 prime and 4 this is the Carnot cycle. So, what is conclusion that it is because of this ideal regeneration cycle, heat is added at a constant temperature and heat is rejected at constant temperature. So, what is Q H? So, you can see that Q H, what is Q H? Carnot cycle and heat addition Q H equal to how much? Q H equal to T H into S 3 minus S 2 prime, T H into S 3 minus S 2 prime, right. So, this is the heat addition for the Carnot cycle. So, this is T H. So, this is T H and this is T L and similarly heat rejection Q L equal to T L how much S 4 minus S 1 prime right. We have written that so this is also delta S S 3 minus S 2 prime and S 4 minus S 1 prime is also delta S. So, what we can conclude that the efficiency of the ideal regenerative cycle seems to be equal of the I mean seems to be equal to that of the Carnot efficiency. So, ideal regenerative cycle is equivalent to the Carnot cycle in which heat addition is at high temperature constant temperature T H, heat rejection again is at constant temperature T L and it is because of this regeneration at least what you can see we could eliminate this segment at which the heat addition to the you know at high temperature becomes I mean average temperature of heat addition becomes lower. So, you know uh, regeneration we can see. So, we it is by making use of this regeneration we can increase the efficiency of the cycle and very important part is this regeneration you know that uh, uh, we will see later that it not only improves the efficiency of the cycle, but it also provide a convenient means of deaerating the feed water. Let me tell you briefly when the steam is taken to the condenser, I have discussed this issue that condensers are operated at a pressure which is less than atmospheric pressure. So, chances are there of leakage of air into the condenser from the ambience. So, the feed water which would be collected and again will be pumped back to the boiler will be having some air, but if we cannot deaerate the feed, feed water. So, if we cannot remove air from the feed water, it may leads to the proper design, it should not be a proper design if we do not think about the removal of air from the feed water before it enters into the boiler, because presence of air in the feed water uh, start you know uh, what I can say initiate corrosion of the boiler pipe. So, that is that is again very uh, you know detrimental from the perspective of the boiler operation, but this regenerative not only not only improves the efficiency that we have seen from today's discussion, because we could show that the ideal ideal regenerative cycle is equivalent to the Carnot cycle, in which constant temperature heat addition is there and constant temperature heat rejection is there, but it also provide a convenient means of deaerating the feed water before it enters into the boiler that part we will discuss in the next class. But before coming to the conclusion let me tell you though we could establish that the regenerative cycle efficiency is as good as Carnot cycle efficiency, but such an arrangement which we have discussed today is not a practically viable uh, solution. So, there are several other ways by which the temperature of feed water can be increased before it enters into the boiler 
and those aspects we shall discuss in the next class. So, with this I stop here today, we shall continue our discussion on this particular topic in the next class. Thank you. Thank you.